So like, uh, uh, like the guys introduced me, I'm Ivan from Morales, like Moham introduced me. And uh, thanks for inviting me here to DigitalOcean to speak. And uh, we are building a workflow. We're building a Web3 workflow. You can go to the next slide that enables devs to connect smart contracts, to connect the uh, uh, backend, to connect frontend into one single for a workflow. And that's very important because right now when you are building your DAP, the problem is that you need to build a lot of backend yourself. So for example, right now, if you are a DAP developer, you need to sign up to AWS or DigitalOcean and to spin up a lot of backend. So when we started Rust, we thought, why isn't there a platform? Because there are such platforms in web too. For example, there are Firebase and there are other platforms that do backend as, as a service for you, platform as a service for you. And, uh, and that's what Morales is. We, we want to take away all of this uh, complexity of running nodes and then using your own tech in order to tie everything together to index your own database. It's something that developers now spend a lot of time on. And that is time that is not spent serving the clients. It's, it's time not spent building the actual use case. And especially when you add cross-chain into the mix, like Vasily discussed right before the session, I mean, imagine a developer and they need to figure out how to run Elrond and all, all of the other blockchains they need to spin up all the infrastructure themselves. They need the backend team. They need an operational team. And especially if they they want to do this at scale and uh, let's say they want to index Solana blockchain or Binance chain blockchain where you have 2000 transactions per second they also need to be very very good at running databases and and that's always uh, a challenge that is uh, that you need constant attention to and it's in, all of these problems are inherent if you want to build a blockchain application so for us it was clear when we started Morales that, look, there is not a good solution for developers. Uh, developers need to be backend engineers, need to have a backend team. And we thought this, this cannot continue like this. We need a platform, which is backend as a service. And um, yeah, that's, that is what Morales is, that uh, we provide you all the infrastructure you need to start building. And you can log in users, get their assets, get their transactions. You can start indexing smart contracts just from the UI without spinning up the whole backend yourself. And you can go to the next slide. Uh, and the, the most important thing also is that we want to increase the productivity because if devs are spending time running backend and figuring this out themselves, they are not productive. And just like the cloud really enabled internet to go mainstream in ways we never thought, and you really think about last 15 years, that's when it really happened. Before that, internet was still, I mean, it was still big, but I remember 15 years ago, it was still a bit weird to pay online, to enter your credit card online. And it was so early on. So the last 15 years, the cloud as an industry allowed internet to become mainstream. So Morales is doing the same thing for Web3. We have we give the tools, we provide the infrastructure that allows Web3 to go mainstream. So just like using DigitalOcean, you don't have to run your own data center. Using Morales, you don't have to run your own nodes. So that's very important. You don't have to run your own indexer on top of those nodes. So you don't need to figure out how to connect your users to their on-chain activity and, and things like that. We give you nice, easy SDKs for everything. We can go to the next slide. And the, the most important thing is that no matter no matter which blockchain you're on, whether you're on Ethereum, Solana, Elrond, you actually need exactly the same things. And the, the challenges that developers face is that they need to redo exactly the same thing on different blockchains in different ways. So let's say I log in a user and they want to fetch all their NFTs. I do that in one way on Ethereum. I do it in another way on Solana. I do it in a third way on Elrond. And it's crazy that you have to repeat all of that. And by uniting, uniting everything, into one single infrastructure, one single platform. This is this is uh, what Morales is and the, the challenges that we ensure that we help the developers with. Now, uh, another important thing, of course, is that whenever you start a project, you don't have resources. So lack of funding, it's very, very key in early stage, uh, early stage projects to figure out. And a big part of your funding will go to tech. You're just starting a tech project, you, you have to figure out a bunch of tech. So that's a big, uh, big aspect of Morales, we remove a lot of cost from you, from your team, so you can actually build the front end. Um, and another important thing as well is that there are a lot of insecure dependencies, both when it comes to JavaScript, when it comes to Solidity, a lot of these primitives that developers use in Web3, they're early, they're new. And a problem, of course, is that we do see a lot of hacks, we do see a lot of exploits when people use untested and unproven technologies. And we see it a lot with bridges, for example, we see it a lot in other smart contract scenarios where there are a lot of new innovation happening, which is great, but it also leads to security problems.
So at Morales, we also offer templated solutions. So whether you want to build NFT marketplace or NFT or bridge, we use template solutions with battle proven technologies for you to build your use case. And this is key as well, that as Web3 is very early on, it is very new. And it's, it's important that developers keep the security in mind. And with Morales, you, you, you don't have to think about that at all because we give you the proven templates. We give you the proven audited solutions. So that's very, very important. We can go to the next, uh, next slide. Um, and um, uh, basically we discussed a lot of this already. We can go to the next slide as well, uh, what, what Morales does and, and how it works. Uh, now, an important thing now switching a bit to what we learned and uh, how we've been growing for the past uh, year or so. Uh, we started in early 2021. And uh, since then, we, we grow a lot. We've grown over to over 100,000 developers using us, a lot of projects, a lot of different solutions built on Morales. But the biggest lessons are actually not technical. The biggest lessons is actually how do we create a talented team with different professionals from all kinds of sectors, whether it is marketing, whether it is managing, whether it is engineering, all kinds of different sectors. The problem becomes how do we ensure that they enter Web3 space as soon as possible? How do we ensure that whoever wants to work with us can actually get onboarded into the Web3 space as quickly as possible? So that's very important because many people want to work in Web3, but also many people are new. They have a lot of talent. They have a lot of experience in uh, other, other fields, but then they enter Web3 and they are completely new. They don't really understand what is a node, what is a lot also has to do with the different the cultural aspects of Web3, because you have to understand, for example, that, all right, this year it is NFTs and it's a lot of cultural aspects there. What is hot? Okay, now people want to not only do NFTs, now they also want to change their metadata. So we need to have solutions that are in, in tune with the pulse of the industry, that if you have an NFT, we cannot right now be certain that the metadata will be the same. It's an example of a challenge we had that suddenly people started to change their metadata and have different reveals that you buy an NFT and then you get, and the metadata gets revealed after some time. So this is very, very important that we need to onboard people. We need to educate them about our industry. We need to educate them about the culture so that they can drive our organization forward and they are having themselves the pulse of the industry and they can take it into their consideration when they are making decisions about the product, when they're making decisions about how we grow and so on and so forth. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Um, now, an important thing generally building anything is to number one, identify the problem you're solving. So Morales, when we looked at, when we entered the space, we looked at the tech solutions. We saw, of course, a lot of node providers. And we mentioned some of them in the previous uh, talks, like QuickNode and, uh, and Infura and so on and so forth. Uh, we also saw a lot of APIs. So there, are, there were APIs for fetching the balances or doing a bunch of things. And we identified the problem is that although I, as a developer, may have some of the solutions, I still am responsible for tying it all together on my backend. Although I can get a node for Ethereum, I still need to run the graph protocol on my backend to make any sense of the data that the node provides. Just using a node provider is worthless for me in most cases because it cannot give me information that is actionable and useful in a DAP. A node cannot give you a lot. So that's why you have a bunch of other techs on top of a bunch of other technologies on top, like the graph protocol that you need to run. So that, that's how we identified the problem. And, and that's really the advice to everyone watching this, that whatever you're doing, the problem is to be very clear. What are we solving here? So uh, our, our, our identified problem was that you need to have a backend team, an operational team. You need to do so many things just to do the basic things such as logging in a user and getting their balances and just starting to onboard the user into your Web3 experience. Uh, number two is to keep it simple. So when we started Morales, we just had a very simple solution where we allowed you to log in the user and get all their balances cross-chain and then also updates for those balances. So you can subscribe to whenever your user transfers something on any blockchain, you get an update. So we started very simple. And from there we built on top and we built more solutions, more SDKs, more, more APIs based on the feedback we get from the community by listening to the, to the pulse. And, um, and, and this has been very important. So for example, we did a lot of studies whether we should provide the gaming SDKs for game engine or whether we should uh, provide the mobile SDKs, for example, for iOS and Android. 
And uh, for us, it was clear looking at the Pulse in 2021 that game engine was the was the route to go because uh, uh, play to earn and game fi and metaverse was exploding, and that's where we saw the most demand from our clients. And and this is important that you keep your solution simple because you don't know what to build. You may you may think you know what to build, but in most cases it's gonna be wrong. You have to listen to to the community. So that's how we started. We started simple and then we started listening. Hey guys, what do you want? You want mobile or gaming? Okay, let's do game game engine integration. Maybe in the future we're gonna focus more on iOS and Android, which is still our plan going forward. Uh, and this also ties into number three, to be agile and creative. And uh, look, you yourself, you're not creative. You, if you may think that you have ideas and that they are great ideas, in most cases, they will not be good until you try them. So we work a lot in, in trying to uh, decrease the time before an idea that we get and before we try it out. So we have, for example, different ways that our clients can participate in different user tests where you can try out a new feature that is not even built but it's like a mock-up you can you can click around and you can give us feedback and, and say is this good or not sometimes we publish different um, uh, forms for new features where we say hey you know we're going to launch this feature soon do you want to sign up already and get early access and we can see look if nobody signs up maybe we shouldn't even build it <laughs> why why should we build something that nobody signed up for so that's very important and number four we've been speaking about this a lot already it's to keep the community close because in this industry that is moving very quickly you cannot be an oracle if you think that you know what's going to happen you don't because just a year ago nobody said that nfts were big and then they exploded out of nowhere and i remember in 2019 DeFi came out of nowhere as well before that decentralized finance was not a thing so it's very important that you you're humble and you understand that nobody knows how this is going to play out just like in the early 90s with the internet who knew which kind of use cases would be big uh, nobody knew and uh, that's very important to be agile and listen to community and and uh, keep that in mind that uh, it's all about what the community wants and we need to adapt as infra providers to that so that's very very important so that's a summary of what morales does and what we learned and i'm happy to take some questions great Thanks, Ivan. Uh, I think I uh, couldn't agree more with you. When you speak about simplicity and community, that's something that we focus on at DigitalOcean as well. Um, with that, um, I, we will open, up, open it up for questions in just a minute. Uh, before that, I wanted to kind of share some resources. Some of you were asking for um, further resources. Uh, there is a blockchain guide that we put together. So my colleague Beda will share this out in the chat. Um, so you can use that to learn more about blockchain. If you would like to try DigitalOcean, there is a free trial for $100 if you want to get started. And uh, if you would like to connect with our team, uh, then please use this link to uh, reach out to us. Uh, we also mentioned about a tech talk that's coming up pretty soon. This is on May 18th, and my colleague Darian will be running this. And the topic for this uh, tech talk is Beyond Crypto, how blockchain is taking over the business world. And with that, um, I want to open it up for questions, but before that, a couple of rules. Uh, I know we have more than 40 people and uh, we still have people joining in. So I want to ensure we have some uh, rules of engagement here. Um, please uh, use the reaction um, icon to raise your hand and we will enable uh, you to uh, ask your question. Uh, before you ask your question, please state your name, title, organization, and um, you can ask any specific questions for speakers or our DigitalOcean team. Uh, ideally, it would be great if you could also enable your video. And uh, we request that all of you kindly maintain a professional code of conduct uh, as this is a community event. With that, I know um, Factory, uh, uh, Factoria Blockchain uh, had a question. If you can unmute yourself and ask your question, that would be great. Hello, good morning from Spain. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, good morning. My name is Frank uh, Javier Lopez uh, from Spain, the product manager of Factory Blockchain. I'm currently a Python developer uh, and a beginner uh, blockchain developer on Tethos. We are developing our first notarization app on Tethos. And I would like to to thank you, Ivan, for, for joining us today and for your speaking. And, and I would like uh, to, to ask you uh, if you would have some piece of advice to uh, something new entering this, this world. Uh, like me, for example, I, have, uh, I, I happen 
uh, to me, the same that happened to Team of Ryan before, uh, just setting up new backend nodes uh, uh, on DigitalOcean, just taking many weeks to to set the, the server up and put things together. Uh, what would you recommend to to be more technically prepared on this side? Yeah, yeah. So when it comes to Tezos, that ecosystem still uh, lacks a lot of these tools. And uh, we hope to come to, to Tezos eventually. But if you have an idea, let's say notarization, or uh, th that's what you said, right? You want to do something with uh, documents and uh, notarizing. It, my advice would be to do it on uh, Polygon or Ethereum or Solana, something where the tool set is, is uh, broader. So you can spend time building the use case. And then let's say that your use case is good and you get traction. If you, if you really want, you can, you can still go to Tezos. But I do recognize the problem. And personally, I don't know a lot of uh, uh, tools for Tezos outside of just the bare nodes. So uh, uh, I cannot tell you that. But in general, I would say to, to use the blockchains with a lot of uh, tools and the big community and large uh, ecosystem. And uh, yeah, for, whether it's Polygon or, or, or Solana or Binance Chain or ETH, uh, it's, it's, a lot, uh, it's a lot of tools to choose from. Okay, thank you. Great. Thanks, Ivan. Um, Tim, it's great to see that your video is now working. Uh, thank you. Uh, anybody else has a question? Please raise your hand. By the way, something to add to that. So let's say that you love Tezos. You, you can build some tool for it. I mean, that's probably way more needed right now than a lot of other use cases. Because if, if you love Tezos, let's say you use Tezos, maybe you can build something that allows devs to build uh, to build quicker. Uh, just some, a simple thing like node manage, management solution or, or something on top of it. Because someone at the end of the day has to build it. So if you think that Tezos is uh, the future, I think it's, it's a good opportunity. Yeah, 